Hello everybody, it is I, the Willowiggy Big Mac, and welcome back to... Hold up. Sam and Max. Save the world. Uh, so last time, so last time we completed episode two, uh, we stopped, uh, um, I, Myra, I think her name was? Anyway, anyway, we stopped Myra, uh, saved, saved all the hostages in her, uh, in her show. And that seems to be that, that, that looks to be, uh, that looks to be it, but apparently, uh, apparently there's a mafia that's being hinted at, uh, that we have to deal with. So, uh... But, uh, maybe, maybe we don't have to worry about them, I don't, I don't know. The mole, the mom, and the meatball! Hiya, Sam! Good news, Max. I think I just gave birth to a bouncing baby hernia. Hiya! Uh. <gasps> I got it, <laughs> I, I got it, it. I get it. Ow. <laughs> Hello. Yes, Commissioner? Holy cap wearing catfish flopping a crime beat. We're on our way. Did he get the notes I sent him? Yes, but he said to stop carving them into the suspects. He can't read them without his bifocals. What if I just write bigger? Forget that, Max. We're after the most infamous organized crime outfit in the city, the Toy Mafia. The Toy the Mafia? Killers with no respect for human life, but an odd predilection for delightful children's toys? The same. I love those guys! The Commissioner has reason to believe that the Toy Mafia's secret headquarters are located in the one place no one would ever suspect. Teddy Bear's Mafia-Free Playland and Casino. The shallowest place on Earth? Oh, boy! Well, it's not going to be all laughs and dyspepsia, little chum. It's a rescue op. The Commissioner sent an undercover mole to investigate, but he hasn't reported in weeks. Our job is to make contact with the mole and see if he needs help. Is he a large, star-shaped mole or more of a beauty mark? No idea, Max. To find him, we're supposed to give the code phrase, does the carpet match the drapes? And what'll he say? He'll say, well, I never, then smack me across the face. Sounds great. Let's do this. Well, so toy, so the, so, uh, the Mafia free place, that, that's what the Mafia wants you to think. A very disturbed individual sits here. All right, let's check around here, old case files. Ah, uh, yes, I remember that case. Particularly gruesome. Uh, let's see what Jimmy, Jimmy Two Teeth fence. It's a sad day when hardworking rodents have to make their living as a freestanding form of enclosure. Uh, I think that's fence in the buys and sells stolen goods sense of the word. Feed it. You're getting in way of my customers. What customers? Interesting. Well, let's well let's open up the closet door and see what we got here. So we got Brady Culture's hair. Uh, Brady Culture's hair. It makes for an unwieldy but oh-so-enchanting memento of our first case. He howled like a sick wallaby. Yep, so we already, we already saw that. Uh, the Hypno Bear. This chart pile of scrap serves as a touching reminder of the fun we had at WARP-TV. I've determined that whether for food or for sport, I just really enjoy frying things. There we go. Well then, is there anything else we can play with? Uh, let's look on the television. Look, Max, the Midtown Cowboys reruns. Better get the serious toothpaste. Turn it off! I hate the sound of my voice on tape. It doesn't sound like me. Oh, that's unfortunate. Well, I think I think we goofed around enough in here, so we might we might as well uh, move on out. Uh, let's go visit Bosco, I guess. Uh, while while we're while we're doing that, uh, let's let's look at the tabloid. Alien love rectangle post. I had no idea there was such fierce competition among alien love polygon tabloids. Myra Stump shocks crowd with new hairstyle. Wow, talk about a slow day for news. I don't Man. talk about the news, Sam. I make it. Uh, let's check the gumball machine. Hmm, are those? Yep. They've resorted to filling the candy machine with antidepressants. <laughs> How depressing. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, okay. Uh, anyway, uh, you might you might notice my voice may be a bit louder than usual. Uh, when I was when I was looking back at the footage I I recorded of the first 
of episode one and two of this game, I noticed that the that whenever I was talking during the uh, during the other characters speaking, my voice was kind of getting uh, drowned down when, when I'm making some snide some maybe snide remarks, maybe not snide remarks, but uh, but yeah, I, so I kind of. I kind of adjusted the uh, the volume a bit of my mic because I do have a, uh, a gain uh, dial on my microphone and I did adjust the game audio a bit so it might work out it might not uh, it's kind of hard to say I won't I would not know how everything sounds until uh, after I'm done recording anyway hey, let's Bosco. see what boss goes up to nice flapjack son of God I'm blue who is this Bosco Hey guys, it's me, Bosco. No, but you may call me Jean-Francois Bandepart, the new way French anarchist. Great, great. He went from he went he went from being American to British, and now he's French. The goddamn coward. Gah. So Bosco, why'd you get Frenchified? They saw right through my British disguise. I don't know how they did it, but they found me. Who? The mafia. The Toy Mafia. They've got it in for me. Take a number, guys. What manner of nightmarish atrocities has the Toy Mafia committed against you? Nothing, yet. Ah, but I know what they are planning. And it is terrible. Are they planning to tie you down, tape your eyelids open, and turn on the 24-hour Midtown Cowboys channel? Well, not that bad. I have reason to believe they are planning to deliver something to my store. Another, another delivery conspiracy, eh? Another delivery conspiracy? What could a band of ruthless toy mongers possibly want to put in here? I don't know. Uh, but it is no matter. They will never be able to deliver anything to my store. Well, my name is not Jean-Francois Bandepard. But your name's not Jean-Francois... Shh! They don't know that. What's keeping the Toy Mafia from making a delivery? Yeah. Well, for one, I am watching always. They will never sneak past me. Yeah, just like Wizard couldn't sneak past you. And two, even if they do get past me, I got a fail safe. It's the greatest invention the world has seen since b -tans. I call it the Bosco Tech Anti-Delivery System. What's the acronym for that? Uh, also b -tans. It is a b tad part D. How does BTAD's part do work? First is the anti-delivery camera. Hmm. It keeps a massive photo recognition database of every inconvenient item I store. How completely impractical! If anything is placed in the stores that the anti-delivery camera does not recognize, it is put out on the streets. Vive la France! Oh, interesting. That? You know what? I'll give Bausco this. He actually thought of something for once. Without needing to uh, ruin uh, the original beat, that's. Ugh, I'm gonna take out my, my recliner here. My gaming chair is a recliner, by the way. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's see we what he has available. We oui, oui, monsieur. What do you got? Oh la la! Behind the counter, I have the latest in Bosco Tech innovation. A device non pareto chocolate. Is that good? Oui oui. This I call a miniature listening device. Ooh. It can fit in any cravat, under any chapeau. What to do? It listens. You can use it to hear secret conversations, no? No. I mean, yes. Let's see, how much does okay, he want for listening device? We'll take that miniature listening device. As the price is 10 million dollars. 10 million? Wait. Is that 10 million in crazy fake French dollars or 10 million in regular dollars? Regular dollar. The market is bearish on crazy fake French dollar. Uh, wait, hold on. I wasn't, I wasn't even paying attention. Hold Give on. Us that many. 10 million. 10, mi play. 10 million? We'll be back if and when we have an unex. Alrighty. Do you have any stray tufts of Sasquatch hair? No. Why do, why do I feel insulted? Do you have any hats in the shape of a cow udder? No. Do you have any rubber chickens with a pulley in the middle? No. Rubber chickens with a pulley in the middle? What? Do you have any amulets of protection against greater hypnosis? No. 
Don't wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't we? Don't we already have a little device that prevents hypnosis? Do you have any? No. How do you know what he was gonna? No. <laughs> do you? No. Do no. <laughs> do you? No. <laughs> <laughs> do you? No. Do you have any straight tufts of Oh, oh, it loops no. there. Oh, man. Nothing for us right now. Zip. Does the carpet match the drapes? No. And you know why? Because the man does not want him to. He is threatened by their potential unification. Mm hmm. Look outside. It's the Toy Mafia. What? Where? Fools, there is no one. <laughs> Sorry, Bosco. Just yanking your chain, amigo. Sacre bleu. I could do this all day. And I intend to. <laughs> see you later, Bosco. I know not this Bosco of whom you speak. But if I see him, I shall beat him a reservoir. Alrighty. Hmm. I feel like I'm I feel like I'm missing something here. Well let's look check our info. Oh! We we no longer oh we no longer have the the uh the tear gas grenade launcher, huh? Let's see, is there anything new here? Nope. Well we're just gonna be leaving. Uh and actually we're gonna take a quick detour back to the office because I just remembered I forgot to pick up something. Now you might be wondering what what did I forget to pick up? Well you'll see in just a moment. I just have to run over there. Already. Over. Over by Jimmy hey, Tooties. An extra card up your sleeve never hurts. Except when the other guy catches you with it and decides to riddle every inch of your body with high caliber bullets and then dump your mutilated corpse in an empty field. Yeah, except then. Alright, yep. Now, now, there's a reason why we need this. Uh, now before we, now before we get into the, uh, to our car here, let's see what Sybil's up to. Because as you know, Sybil is always changing professions. Alright, what is she up to this time? Hello, Sam. Hello, Max. Hey, it's our favorite short attention span careerist. This time, I found the job for me. I've become a professional trial witness. What? But, 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 professional trial, trial but, but, what? What exactly is a professional trial witness? Oh, it's great. We give dramatic testimonies, sequester in ritzy hotels, and order room service in the name of truth and justice. It almost sounds like you're enriching yourself at the expense of this country's overcomplicated legal system. Do you have a problem with that, Mr. Freelance Police? Yeah, why didn't we think of it? <laughs> Gotta love Max. What led you to decide to become a professional witness? Publishing the Alien Love Triangle Times taught me a lot about the truth, you know? The truth is far out there? Exactly. And then one day I got called for jury duty, and the rest is history. What's your next career gonna be? Oh, there is no next career. I'm sticking with trial witnessing for good. Famous last words there. Famous last words. No, seriously. Any ideas about your next cockamamie profession? I resent that. <clears throat> Do you have your first case yet? No, but I'm waiting for a call from the district attorney. He says he's got something I'd be perfect for. You don't feel uncomfortable getting a case first and then being a witness for it? Not at all. You see, the problem with most trials is that crimes are witnessed by someone who's unprepared for what's going to happen or who doesn't have sufficient training or skills to accurately remember or relate what happened. With my background and widely varied skill set, I'm perfect. That makes sense. Should I be afraid? Probably. Yeah, yeah, we should probably be uh, afraid. Does the carpet match the drapes? Does the carpet match the drapes? Interior decorating was like eight months ago. I'm a trial witness now. Isn't trial witnessing a trifle dangerous? Oh no. We're protected by the truth. Uh we'll be back, Sybil. Yeah. Keep one eye on the truth. 
Yeah, somehow I have a feeling that Simple's probably not going to be any help for us uh, this go around. Witnessing! Yep. Uh, let's get to the uh, DeSoto. Uh, preferably fast. Where? Teddy Bear's Mafia Free Playland and Casino. So, this is where we'll be spending most of our uh, time in this game at. Man, this man, this place is giving me some FNAF vibes. <laughs> Ribby. And here we are. Welcome to Teddy Bear's Mafia Free Playland and Casino. Oh. That face. My name's Lovey Bear. Boy, do we have some fun and games for you. Here, take this token amount of tokens as our way of saying welcome and go spend a lot of money. Hmm. Holy domesticated ursins, Max. Lovey Bear here's got the same head as that hypnotic teddy bear from Myra's talk show. You think that little talk show bear had a litter of giant babies? I don't know, Max. Call it canine intuition, but I think our mole discovered something about these teddy bears he shouldn't have. We've got to find him and get to the bottom of this. You're lucky this mask doesn't have ear holes, or I might have heard that secret conversation you just had right in front of me. <laughs> what? Sorry, I wasn't listening. You give tokens to first-time customers? That's right. Go on, enjoy, live a little. It just seems like bad business sense. Okay, tell you what. 13 hours from now, when you're trying to pawn your little friend here to pay off the VIG, we can talk then about bad business sense. <laughs> we'll come back then. I hear you have a mole problem. Hey! It's a genetic condition. You should have seen my father's back. <laughs> Holy cow, I'm actually being too subtle. First time that's ever happened. Maybe I should just stick to the code phrase. Does the carpet match the drapes? If Don Ted E. Bear says so, they do. Don Teddy Bear? I thought this place was mafia free. That's right, kiddies. 100% <laughs> mafia free. No mafia anyways. Come on, True. We're looking for somebody who works here. Look, I just greet the guests. You want to know who works here? Talk to Don Ted E. Bear. He's in charge. Where's the Don? He's got, uh, business in the back room. You know what I mean? What kind of business? Hmm. Yeah, the kind of business that gets said like it's got quote marks around it, so's you know not to ask. We're looking for somebody who works here. Just talk to Ted E. Bear in the back room. He knows everyone. All right. Thanks, Lovey Bear. Enjoy. And remember, if you're not losing, we're not winning. <laughs> yep, yeah, that's, uh, that's quite that's quite the something here. Uh, well, let's see. Well, we can play Rack the, Whack the Rats. Look, Max, it's a beloved carnival game with a delightful mobster twist. What better way to relax than by offing fake rodents in the most violent way imaginable? Note. Please supply your own firearm. We always do. Insert token to play. Well, let's see. Tokens. Well, let's give this a shot. <laughs> I'm in pain. These rats are gonna pop up, see? If the rat's keeping his mouth shut, you don't touch him. But if that rat's singing, you put a bullet in his head, capiche? Now have fun. How can we not? Cool. Ma imagine trying to play this on on because I know this game had a Wii version. Nice shooting, kid. My high school guidance counselor was right. I should have become a mafia hitman. Look, there's the prize. As advertised, it's an almost entirely worthless teddy bear refrigerator magnet. 
Man. Hey, let's find someone with a metal plate in their skull and redecorate their forehead. Oh, Max, you really know how to find the bright side of everything, don't you? Yes, I do. Now let's go shoot something. Hmm, I did miss one, so let's... So let's... Oops, nope. Let's... Let me try and, uh, play let's that again. Play again. And see, it's... Let me play that again and see if I can, uh, do better. One, two, three, four... There we Looks go. Like they're we got all out of prices. Look, I got all of them. Hey, I got achievement for that. Cool. Uh, you know what? oh, this looks this looks like poker. Uh, let's wallow in casino magic. I've got a couple of rabbit's feet for luck. Let's see, you know what? Let's talk to uh Leonard. Well, Leonard? what do we have here? I'd say the circus was in town. But I know for a fact they won't be here till next Friday. So you must be here to play cards. Depends. Who are we playing? The name's Steak Charmer. Leonard Steak Charmer. And let's just say I didn't rack up 10 million tokens by getting lucky. <laughs> How'd you get them then? By cheating? Look, Rabbit. Leonard Steak Charmer's no cheat. He's just that good. Okay, hmm. what's the game, Steak Charmer? Truest test of skill there is. Indian poker. Indian poker? Also, uh, well, before we ask about Indian poker, uh, Leonard Snake Charmer here is actually a reused asset from Telltale Games' very first game they, that they made, but even before Sam and Max, uh, in the form of Telltale Games' Texas Hold'em, uh, where he, I think, I think they even referenced his whole name, uh, in dialogue here when we use Leonard Snake Charmer, so let's do that first. Leonard Snake Charmer, huh? You don't look like a Leonard Snake Charmer. Oh, yeah? What do I look like? You look more like, uh, Boris Crinkle. Boris Crinkle, That's there it is. That's what everyone says. Yep, he gets it all the time, so, uh, yeah. So are you a real Indian? Yeah, I'm a wooden Indian. As in, wouldn't bet against me if I was you. I'll kill him. Not yet. <laughs> How do you get anyone to gamble with you? Frankly, you seem shady. I offer great odds, and I possess a certain subtle charm. I hate to break it to you, but non-existent and subtle are two different things. Maybe charm is a euphemism for gum disease. Look, mm. I'm here to play poker. Are we going to get this dog and bunny show on the road or what? <laughs> Leonard, you give new meaning to the phrase, a face only a mother could love. My mama said I was beautiful. <laughs> uh... <laughs> okay, that, that was good. <laughs> that was good. Does the carpet match the drapes? No, it's stained with tobacco juice. Squalid, yet candid. Normally, I like that in a gambler. But for you, we'll make an exception. All right, so how do you how play? How exactly does one play poker of the Indian persuasion? You know you're off to a good start when your opponent doesn't even know how to play. You ever consider that we might be card sharks? Or shark sharks? You know, the kind that eat people for being overconfident? Whatever. Look, it's simple. Both get dealt a card which we put on our forehead without looking at it. So we can see each other's card, but not our own. Pretty sharp, McGruff. Don't call me that. And you make a bet if you think he got the higher card, or fold if you want out. That's it? Yep. And we see who's got the highest card, and then I win, like always. Well, when you put it like that, we'd be fools not to play. All right, let's play some Indian poker. We'd like to try our hand at a hand of Indian poker. You won't regret this, Hound. By which I mean, I won't regret this. Oh, and try any funny stuff with your partner and I'll shoot you both. That seems fair. Alrighty. Alrighty, so he has a 10. And as you may see here with the, with the way he's looking, he may be looking at our card, but... I got 10 million tokens says I got a better card than you. I'm betting it all. Sweet second mortgages on a summer home. We can't match that. Tell you what, Pooch. I'm feeling so confident. I'll give you 10 million to one odds. Just bet one token and you can win the whole pot. Those are mighty good odds. No, they ain't, Deputy Dog. Because I never lose. <laughs> so, in or out? Hmm. Knowing him, we will probably fold. Too rich for my blood. Did someone say blood? 
What? <laughs> I win again. That one was for you, Mama. That's enough for now. Okay. Although I could have sworn you were a dog, not a chicken. A common mistake. <laughs> so, remember that? Remember that card? Let's go right here. Clown nose. Uh, that gave, is one we shiny nose. Almost as shiny as yours. As you may Keep see, it up and you'll get a shiner too. As you may see, he can actually see on the clown nose. So, if we were to just do this, wow, it sticks. And let's let's play him again. Back for a little more public humiliation. Just a little more. Deal. All right. betting all 10 million and you only got to bet one so you're in or out yeah yeah we'll bet sure we'll bet a token yeah sorry fido you lose the dog wins what i you you cheated me what are you talking about leonard how did we cheat you pay up steak trauma mama why weren't you watching over me i'm ruined <laughs> Let's go, Max. Leonard and his dead mother need some alone time right now. <laughs> yeah, let's go see if we can play Whack the Rats ten million times in a row without passing out. So we got ten million. We got ten million tokens. Uh, let's let's see what else can we we, we can do here. A one-armed bandit. Insert token to play. You see that, Sam? It's a little play on the well-known colloquialism for slot machine. The fun just never stops at Teddy Bears. Hmm. Hmm. You're on fire. Hey. Sweet mother of bleary-eyed gambling addiction. We won. Yeah, we won, but there's no prize. You gotta hand it to Teddy Bear. He really puts the bandit in one-armed bandit. Hold it. What's the password? Hmm. Interesting. Well, let's go talk to this guy. Hold it, Mugs. Not Mugs. Max. I don't care if it's Teddy Ruxpin. No one gets in without a password. Oh, right. That would be what again? Why don't you tell me? Does the carpet match the drapes? I don't know. I set fire to the drapes. I love to watch things burn. <laughs> hey, me too! I'm sorry I asked. The password is Swordfish. Nope. The password is Rosebud. Nope. The password is password. Nope. Hmm. Bring me the head of Alfredo Garcia? Nope. I've come to Grandma's funeral? Nope. Who's on first? Nope. Who's your daddy? Nope. I am the walrus? Nope. You remind me of this shopkeeper I know. Nope. I give up. Will you let me in, please? Nope. The password is sword. Nope. Okay, loops there. Let us in. Only toy mafia allowed in. Not that there's any mafia here. Okay, we'd like to sign up for the toy mafia, please. Talk to Chuckles. He's the head of mafia admissions. Where's Chuckles? Right behind this door. This is what it would be like if Catch-22 had a meaner older brother. Look, I don't make the rules. I just blindly enforce them. All right. We'll be back. Like I care. I, I like, uh, yeah, obviously you can tell, like, hmm, there's, it, it, it claims there's no mafia here, but, uh, I don't know, with their New Yorker accent, it makes me think that there soon. are, uh. If the rat's keeping his mouth shut, you don't touch him. But if that rat's singing, you put a bullet in his head, cause a mistrial, and win a souvenir magnet. But yeah, with, with their New Yorker accent, it makes you think twice. But, uh, there's not much we can do here. So, so with that being said, 
We are out of time. That was, that was a good transition. Uh, anyway, we are out of time for today's episode. If you guys uh, enjoy the content that I do, please consider subscribing as I'll really appreciate it. It will help my channel grow and it will help the, uh, it'll help the algorithm push my videos. Uh, with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next episode where... I'll see you guys in the next episode where we're going to be... Well, for starters, we're going to be turning in the, these 20 million tokens and hopefully and hoping that Bosco will give us that uh, that device. And we have the, and we have that magnet that we also have to figure out what to use on. So with that being said, I uh, hope, hope you guys have a good morning, afternoon, and night. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Until then, bye bye <laughs>